Hi FlossTube, it's Julie with Reflections Framing and Stitching. Today is Monday, it is the 13th of March, and this is FlossTube number 68, I believe. Welcome, how are you today? Doing good, I had PT this morning and I, my normal therapist is on, I don't know, off at a seminar or something and the gal that that uh, was filling in for her, did some different things and my back and shoulders are killing me right now. Um, but I thought I would try and get a, a, a video recorded today. Um, it's not going to be very organized because I, I, the reason I'm at the shop today is because I was cleaning up after open house, uh, market open house on Saturday. And it took me a lot longer to get through the fabric and get it all back where it was supposed to be. Um, so I didn't have time to prepare. So it was either do an unprepared video or not do one this week. And I did want to get one done. So here we are. Bear with me. I will do my best to not stutter and stammer. Um, so this is mostly going to be like a market recap sort of thing, maybe part one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how long it will take me to talk about what I want to talk about. So I don't know. And then I thought I would go home. I've got some antique finds from our trip. But I didn't want to haul them into the shop today, so um, we'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It could be that could be in part two. I don't know. So anyway, I'm back. We had a great time. Um, we left on Wednesday, and um, kind of we were we were doing two a two day drive, so we left Wednesday. And we were in no particular hurry, so we drove as far as Columbia. We left about eight eight thirty in the morning and dro went drove to Columbia with some bathroom breaks. Um, the girls were on my case to go to the bathroom more often because of my kidney problem. Um, so we had some bathroom breaks in there, but we got to Columbia at, so we could go to Artichoke Annie's again. Uh, Lori and I had been there previously, but Rosie had not. And Doreen, who normally is not all that into antiques, decided she would come in. And you know, I think shh, don't don't repeat this. <laughs> but I think we've pulled her over to the dark side just a little bit. <laughs> so just a little bit. She's she's she. She did good. She found some things, and she actually said something about she can kind of see the the uh, the draw for antiquing now. And um, she was telling her husband about it, and he said, "Oh, well, that means you can go to the brass armadillo with me." And she's like, "What?" Apparently, her husband likes to antique, but. She didn't know that because he never said anything because he knew she didn't like to. So now he wants her to go with him, too. So um, we're, we're pretty happy that we've managed to pull her over to the dark side. Um, so we, we did Artichoke Annie's for two, two and a half hours or so. And then we uh, took off and kind of didn't take our normal route we were trying to find a place to stay for the night and everything seemed to be booked up. So we kind of departed from our normal route and uh, stayed, where did we stay? I can't remember now. I can't remember where we stayed, but um, we, we did finally find a place and uh, stayed the night there and then got up in the morning. We, couldn't, we could not check into the Embassy Suites until four o'clock. Uh, so we had pretty much all day because we were up by and about by eight. Uh, so we took some backish roads, not back back roads, but backish roads, um, and meandered our way to Paducah, Kentucky, and went to a couple of um, 
antique stores there. Uh, surprisingly enough, I did not buy anything. Everyone else did, but I didn't. I didn't find anything I really wanted to have. But it was really a nice drive. Uh, we got to see a little more of the country. There were blooming trees and flowers and green grass, and it was just. It was just a very nice trip. We had a great time. Um, we got to uh, Franklin at about 4 o'clock, just in time to check in. I did not get a second room at uh, the Embassy Suites. So uh, Lori and, and Doreen just kind of hung out with us until it was time to head, head to their um, hotel and go to bed for the night. Um, but we had a, so, so our trip was really good. We did stop at Steak and Shake on the way down, which was my favorite. And, uh, I sure wish they'd bring back that salted caramel pretzel milkshake though. I miss that one. Anyway, um, so then Friday, 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 we got up and kind of did a little powwow. The girls were really nervous because they were going to have to choose fabric for the shop. So they were very, very nervous about having to do that. So we had a little powwow and went over things and kind of the colors that maybe I was looking for and, and decided who was going to go where. And then I went to the retailers meeting um, and then back to the room for a little while, had a, had a snack, and then went and uh, sat in front of uh, Rogue Fabric. They uh, they had their door open, so I was I was peeking in, and they were nice enough to let me come in and not buy. I could look, I could look and kind of kind of make a list of what maybe I was looking for there. And while I was looking, I chatted with uh, both of the gentlemen and and uh, set up a trunk show. So we're gonna have a trunk show of their fabrics in April-ish, end of April, first part of May. So we'll have it during our, our retreat and then a little while after retreat. So that'll be nice. Uh, so everyone can see maybe all of their colors that they have or at least all that they send. Um, so that was good because that was one of my goals, was to try and set up a couple of trunk shows. Um, so after I was done looking and making kind of my list, I went back. Um, Rosie was with me, because this was her first time at market, so she really didn't want to be off on her own. So she just kind of followed me around and kind of was the navigator. And, and uh, so we sat out in front of his room and just chatted with everyone else that was sitting out in front of their room for about an hour before they before they opened up, and then uh, but then the fun started. <laughs> we hit the ground running, texts were flying. I'm here. Where are you? I've got this. Oh my gosh, they don't have that. It was just <laughs> it was, you know it was it was a furious four hours of shopping because it went from four until eight but it felt like it was eight hours worth. I don't know why, but everybody was saying how that four hours just seemed to go on and on. You'd look at the clock and it'd only be six o'clock. Um, and then it was only 6.15 when you thought surely an hour had gone by. So we managed to get through, everyone took a floor, and we managed to get through um, pulling, getting all the customer pre-orders taken care of because that is always my first priority, is to take care of the customers and what they want. Um, unfortunately, even then, we, by the time we got to some, some places, they were already sold out, which is, <clears throat> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a pet peeve, a frustration for a shop owner. It's the fir very first night, and you're already sold out of some of the product that that we need. And granted, I had not done a lot of pre-orders this year. I, I accepted pre-orders from the customer, but because I wasn't 100% sure I was going to, going to go, I didn't actually get a lot of pre-orders sent to the designers 
because I'd missed their deadline by the time I decided I was going. So, you know, that, that was part of the problem. Part of the problem is they just didn't bring enough. Um, and I realized that would be a very, very hard thing to try and figure out. So it's not like I'm mad at them. I'm just saying it's a frustration for, as a shop owner first night and they're already sold out. Um, so went back to the room and trued things up because there are always mistakes either in their favor or our favor. Um, we had quite a few in our favor that we, you know, I had one designer that gave us an extra chart, so we took that back to them, and another one that shorted themselves 10 bucks. So we, you know, we, we always go through our invoices and make sure that everything is just lined up appropriately, that everything adds up and that we fix it. They, I don't want to have to pay more than I'm supposed to, and I don't want them to be out of money that they're supposed to have. So, you know, I don't know, I don't know if everyone does that, but that's just something that I have always done. Um, Lori and Doreen left to go to to their hotel about, I don't know, probably 10 or so, and I think I worked until midnight trying to make the the numbers balance. Um, and I, I got to within $6, which I think was a tip that I forgot to write down from the trip. Um, so that was day one, and that was the short day. <laughs> day two, um, we went down for breakfast. My the little guy that makes the the omelets uh, remembered me from last year because I'm the cheese lady. I, when I order my omelet, I always you know I usually get bacon and sausage, but then cheese, cheese, and when you think you have enough cheese, add more kind of thing. So he remembered me from last year. Had to make fun of me a little bit for that. <laughs> Had breakfast with um, Linda and was it who was it? Lin it was Linda and Karen, I think. Uh, Linda is my friend that has a shop in Conway, and um, Karen works for her. So we had breakfast together and chatted a little bit. No, oh, that was no, that was Friday morning. We had breakfast with her. Saturday morning, I had breakfast with. Lisa Smith from Kindred Stitcher. She she asked if she could sit with us, and I'm like, sure, be happy to. So we had breakfast with her and chatted with her a little bit. And um, then did the shopping thing, and you know the routine just repeated itself. I'm not going to bore you by going detail by detail, but yeah, we we shopped all day, got back to the room, ordered some food trued it up, went to bed, got up Sunday, same thing, finished up about one and hit the road. We were on the road by two to come home. Um, met a lot of nice new pe people that were new to me. Met a lot of them. I had a couple of really nice people come up to me and, and uh, you know, thank me for making videos and, and telling me how much they enjoy watching them. So I appreciate you doing that. Uh, um, it was nice to meet you. One, one was from the Netherlands. Um, so that, it, you know, that's always nice to know that your videos are being watched and appreciated. Um, what else do I know? Uh, Nothing earth shattering. Uh, I haven't got my fabric from Fortnite yet. They were they ended up not coming, and um, said they were going to ship it last week. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to have to open up a PayPal dispute because that was paid for in advance, and um, and I can't I can't afford to sit here without having the product and so I'm gonna have to do that um, what else oh while we were Sunday while we were 
wandering around because Sunday's usually the day we go back and get the things that were missed or things that we've thought about and decided to pick up. And I was thinking about the Blackbird design chart that was in the cookbook from Yarn Tree. And just happened to mention, oh, I, I sure wish I'd, I'd have brought the stuff to stitch that. And Lori piped up and said she would stitch it in the car on the way home if we could find, find some stuff for it. So we scattered to try and find a smaller piece of fabric because I didn't want to buy a whole yard, not that there was any yardage left. But I was hoping to find a smaller piece of fabric, which, which I did at Fiber on a Whim. And then we managed to, Weeks had their floss there that you could buy, so we managed to get some of it from there. <clears throat> and the rest I just kind of substituted. Um, Gentle Arts had a packet put together that had one of the colors we needed. So, so we guessed on some of the colors, got close on others, had the, had the called for, and Lori started stitching it on, in the car on the way home. So I thought I would show that to you in case you weren't aware. Um, don't look at this bottom. That That is the Blackbird design that's in the cookbook. And these are my changes that I made. So I'm going to show you the called for colors first, which look like that. Let me see if I hold it up against a, yeah, there. that and then these are the colors we scavenged together which aren't aren't bad they're not they're not too far off um, and then this is the called for fabric which is oatmeal from fiber on a whim it's kind of a golden greeny color. It's one of those that I, my people don't like because uh, it's too green. So I bought this a year ago and it is still uncut because no one likes the green. Um, so this piece is also a fiber on a whim piece, but it's called hazelnut. Hazel wood, sorry. Hazel wood. And let me get this. Let me get this ready. And that's how far she got. Not all in the car. She stayed for a few days after um, we got home to help get things ready. So that's how far she got. And I think there's just a few little things down here and then some scattered and she would have had it done. So I'm going to leave that for her. She'll be back for retreat. And she can use it as one of her whips at retreat. <laughs> but I do appreciate, Lori, that you uh, stitched this. I know it couldn't, it's 36 count. It couldn't have been easy to try and, you know, when you're bouncing down the road in a pickup, uh, couldn't have been easy trying to do that. So I really appreciate it. Um, what else can I tell you about our adventure? I did get a lot of fabric. I got a lot of fabric. I was surprised I got a lot of fabric because that seemed to be what everyone was going for. But I did get a lot of fabric. I unfortunately haven't even touched it. So don't call looking for fabric <laughs> because it's still in the bins in the back. Um, we we uh, brought our little friend home from market and so um, people were dropping like flies. And um, so far, I'm, I'm negative. Dan is negative. Um, two of the others are negative, but two, two are positive for COVID. So, um, so I didn't, didn't have the help that I... that I, uh, once 
once the first one dropped, I was like, I sent the rest home because um, I figured if I wasn't already ex ex going to get sick, I didn't want one of the others to come down with it and then get sick. Then I would get sick. So, so I was short staffed, and we didn't we didn't get to the. Thank thankfully, I had the help to get all the charts and stuff in the computer and the customers' orders pulled and and that sort of thing. But we did not get to the fabric, and that's that's going to take me a while. Going to take me a good long while to get everything measured, and then the the yardage that I'm going to cut into pre-cut pieces that's going to take me a while so do not I will I will make an announcement when I've got it ready to go but it's going to be a while um let's see that's that's kind of yeah you know I thought I thought the market was good uh it didn't feel overcrowded most of the time I felt that the rooms were the designers were pretty busy most of the time, even on Sunday. There were a couple that I would have liked to have talked to, but they were they still had three or four people in their room when I went by. Um, so I in, in my opinion it was a it was a pretty good market and I'm glad I went. Um, like I said before, it's always nice to see those models in person because you see things that you weren't expecting to see or to like when you see it in person. Um, so I have just a few, and I'll probably show a few more in the the next time I film from the shop, but um, I have just a few of some of the ones that I really, really liked that I will show you. And then, um, yeah, then I'll probably stick a fork in this. It's uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon now. And uh, I've been here since 10 on my day off. So I'm ready to go home and make some supper and just chill for the evening before I have to be back here tomorrow. So I'm going to show you a few of these and just talk a little bit about, about them. Um, this is the newest. This is number one in the, new, in the 2023 Fragments in Time which is based on some Berlin wool work, which I kind of happen to like the look of wool work. So um, I actually started stitching this one last night. No, Saturday night. Uh, but I didn't, I, I don't have enough. I might show it to you when I get home. But there's that one. Let me straighten it out a little bit. Um, so that was one of my favorites. Tiny Town seems to be really popular, and this is probably my personal favorite, even though it's blue. I really like it. It's a honey of a tiny town. I think that's really cute. Uh, Sampler's Not Forgotten had quite a few cute little kits this year. I'm just going to show you the one. Um, today anyway but these are these are a kit it comes with the fabric the floss the trims the backing fabric so you can get it all finished up and it has a little charm a little butterfly charm this is the posy basket kit and I thought it was just really sweet um, there were a ton of samplers this year, and there's quite a few that I ended up liking, but I didn't want to overwhelm you with samplers because I know not everyone is a sampler person. Um, but this one, I really like the saying on it, and I, if I'm remembering correctly, she said she didn't care for the saying that was on the original. Um, this is used, uh, This it's an original design, but she's using motifs that she borrowed from an antique sampler, and she didn't care for the words on that one, so she chose her own verse, which I happen to really like, because you know me, I don't really like overly religious or dark verses. 
Um, this one's called warm, One Warm Thought, and it says, The glow of one warm thought is to me worth more than money. Calls for MPI silks, but she does give a DMC conversion. And I did pull the silks. I didn't get them on a, I know I, we usually put them on a stick, but I didn't get that done. So I'm going to hold them up kind of, hopefully kind of flat. And then you can get an idea of the colors. So very pretty. Okay. There's the colors. Aren't they pretty? Kind of sort of have been playing with fabric. Um, none of the new fabric. Again, it's still in boxes. Um, but with what I've got back there. So I've been kind of kind of playing that. This could possibly be one of my new starts for retreat. I don't know. No promises. Um, I don't know anyone who doesn't like red threads. Uh, personally. I'm sure they're, you're out there. But I, I really like red threads. So Mojo Stitches, all my red threads. I really like that one. Now, she calls for cottage garden threads, uh, Gentle Arts, Weeks Dye Works, and Classic Color Works. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different reds in there. I'm not sure that I'm going to do it that way. I think I'll probably do it all just in one variegated red thread. But I do like that. Um, this is one. I didn't get any pre-orders for this one. Um, and and I, based on the picture, I can see why. But in person, it was really, really pretty. And so I had to bring it home for me. So this will go in the drawer of shame. <laughs> it's One Nation from Samplers Not Forgotten. And it's like a needle book. And then you get these this cornu and the little fob but it's really pretty and the colors are really pretty because I may or may not have pulled those and looked at them also um, be a friend from needlework press also I thought was very pretty I thought this was different up here and I liked it you could if you didn't like all the alphabet you could you could just do let me hold this so the glare is not bad you could just stitch this part right here you could cut this part off and stitch that part you could cut this out and bring that down you could just stitch this make it into a little fob or so there's there's a lot of options if you're even if you're not a sampler stitcher there's a lot of options of different things you could do in here you could even like do this part right here or this part right here so a lot of options with that chart had a very good visit with the ladies at Primrose Cottage <laughs> there was no one in their room when I walked in and there were like I don't know five of them at least it, it felt like more <laughs> they all had the, the same you know the t-shirt on and and uh, I'm I'm like wow it's is, is it a party for me I, it's not even my birthday <laughs> so we had a very good visit um, very nice ladies there was a gentleman there too um, had a nice visit with them but this was one of the ones that I really liked all of theirs are cute but this one I thought was was really really pretty. It's uh, I believe welcome 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 to the North Pole. Really look at the cute little cute little conductor in the train and uh, or the, maybe not the the engineer. What do you call the guy that drives the train? Um, and again, you you don't have to do this whole thing. You could do just parts of it. You could do Mr. and Mrs. Claus. You could just do the sled. 
you could do these houses, you could do this house in a tree, so you could make ornaments out of it. Um, so you don't have to do, you know, if this is too big for you, just do little bits and pieces of it. Uh, I said this before in my last video about um, Arlene's exquisite lace piece, uh, works by ABC. The picture was stunning, but the 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 piece in person was I, there is no other word for it, but it was as it, it's exquisite. So um, I had to bring some of those home. I mean, it's just stunning. You you just it's stunning. And then I was in Dirty Annie's and saw this one called Morticia's Second Line, which I thought was cool. I liked all the dancing skeletons and the skeleton horse, and I just really liked that one. And then, finally, there is the probably what I consider to be the prettiest, the most beautiful sampler that was at market. Um, and it's probably not any surprise to you that the name of it is Beloved. It's from running with needles and needles and scissors, I think is how it is. Yeah. Um, just FYI, there is a an error in the key, so uh, if you don't, if you haven't heard that and you have the chart, um, the DMC 317 right there is actually supposed to be 3831. So I put little little papers in the ones that I sold, but. Um, just in case you have one that doesn't have the correction in it, there, there you have it. Um, this one is supposed to be stitched on 46 count Steinbeck from Needle and Flax. I don't carry Needle and Flax, so I don't have that, and I haven't. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm going to wait. This is this is probably going to be the first chart of the day video or chart of the week video once I get through the fabric. But I want to wait to get through the fabric before I start those videos up. So they are coming, for those of you that have said, when are you going to start doing it? I want to get through the fabric and get it into stock so that I have something different to show you rather than what little I have left from before. Anyway, you, this is another one. You could just do the birds if you didn't want to do the entire Although I will say this border in person, whew, was it pretty? Very, very pretty. Um, it's it's DMC and Anchor. Uh, Anchor, in case you didn't know, now comes on spools. And as far as I know, the only place to get it is Joann's. So I ran to my local Joann's and got these three. I happen to have this one in my, Dan bought me a bunch of Anchor for Christmas um, this past year, this past de December. So I had the one, but I didn't have the rest of these. So I got that, and then the rest of the rest of the colors, and again, I didn't, oh, just shoot me. I didn't, um, I didn't put them on a stick so you can really see them, but I will when I do. When I make it a chart of the week video, I will do that for sure. But that's not today. But that's kind of what the rest of the colors look like. Is that not gorgeous? Yes. So I don't know how long I will be able to hold off on starting that. And I haven't. I have, I have to make the decision first as to whether I want to do the whole thing or just the birds. Originally I was thinking just the birds, but then I saw it in person and I was like, ooh, but this border is really pretty. 
really, really pretty. So I, I don't know. I don't know. What What do you think, for those of you who are thinking about stitching this, are you stitching the whole thing or are you just stitching the birds? Let me know in the comments. Um, so that's the only ones that I pulled. There are There are more that I could pull and talk about, but I'd be here all day. And like I said, I need to go home and get my pork roast in the oven and uh, play with the dogs a little bit because they're not used to me being gone on a Monday. I am going to be getting Lola back permanently. Abby has made the decision that um, it's just not any kind of life for Lola to live in fear of the three-year-old. And it's not that the three-year-old isn't trying to be gentle. She is. She's working really hard to be a gentle. But Lola is just not, not doing it. Um, so she just hides all the time. And when when she does come out, if Reese is around, she's shaking and, and shivering and scared to death. So that's no kind of life for her. So I am going to have three dogs soon. We have Hayden's birthday coming up in on Sunday, his birthday party. So I'll bring Lola home with us at that time. Um, Lola gets along fine with Rags and Remy, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and she's only, you know, that big, so she doesn't take up a lot of room. Doesn't eat a lot. So, okay, I am going to be done with this part of the video for now. I'm going to pack up the computer and I'm going to head home and hopefully record um, a little bit more showing you the treasures that I found while we were on our adventure. And um, I had hoped, had, had time permitted, that I could have done a video with everyone showing all of their, um, all of their treasures too, but that didn't happen. There just wasn't time to, to do it. So anyway, um, y'all hang on until I get back to this video. Bye. And I'm home, just like that, blink of an eye. Um, no, really, it's only about a 15-minute drive. Then I sat in the driveway and ta was talking to my sister on the on the phone. So, um, so a little bit of time has passed. <laughs> anyway, I have gathered a few things that I was going to to show you from our antiquing uh, adventures, uh, and. Um, I have some of the stitching that I've, I haven't done a whole lot of stitching, uh, but a little bit. So I have some of that to show you. And then, then we'll probably be done. So, um, I think I'll start with the stitching because I know a lot of, some of you are not interested in the antique part. So I'll start with the stitching and then if you choose to go, you may go, um, I mean, you can go without my blessing, but you can go with my blessing after I show you the, the stitching. I uh, was, have been working on my quilting, quilting bee from the Boo Flower recently. I decided it's, you know, the worst part of it, which is the bee, and I, I don't mean worst by, by the, oh, it was horrible to stitch it. I'm, not, I'm meaning worse as in the most amount of stitching is in that B. The rest of it's not going to take that long, so I just thought maybe it was time that I finished it. What are you guys doing? Are you playing? Get her. Get her, Remy. Get her, get her, get her. No? Okay. Um, so anyway... I th thought I would just show you that one. I started this right after the market that it came out in, which I don't know when that was, because I came home and the dogs have eaten my most of my pattern again. So, um, my bad. I should have should have put it away, but I didn't. Anyway, so this is Lagoon from Picture This Plus, I believe, and the called for colors. 
So I've had I've had it, the majority of it done for a long time. The only what I've been working on, I've managed to do <sighs> there. Uh, this one, this one, this one, and the start of this one. So really, it's it's just it's. I just need to buckle down and finish it, and then this one can be done. And I can have a finish. <laughs> Those happen so rarely in my world. Okay, and I showed you this one earlier. This is the Fragments in Time. And I chose to do it on, I'm stitching on 32 count. It just reminds me why I don't like stitching with two threads. Everything just looks so bulky. Um... I'm just a single thread gal, I guess. Um, but it called for 32. And it was going to be pretty small on 32. So if I'd done it on my 30 or my 40, it, it would have been really tiny. And I didn't want it really tiny, so I did the 32. So this is 32 count salt bush from Fox and Rabbit. There you go. I've got, I think I've got all the white parts done now, except for there might be some in the house that I'm just getting started. That's a window in the house right there. Um, and that's a window. So there's some white in the house itself, but not, not much. So um, this goes all the way over to the side. Then there's another one of these trees right here. So it, that's, that's, pretty much how big it's going to be. The colors are real pretty. I did I'm, I don't have them to show you. I didn't grab those. But the colors are really pretty. And then I worked for a little bit more on my Tisket a Tasket, the red version. Had quite a few of you who asked for that and and I did um I think I did forget to put it in the notes section, but I did tell it to you, and I think I showed it up here. There you go. You can take a screenshot of that. That's just a tiny, tiny portion of the, fat, the chart, so no one's going to be able to stitch it from that. Um, so that, that's, that's what I've got done there. And this is... 40 count, I think it was sand from Picture This Plus. Might have been vellum, but I don't think so. I think it was sand. Okay, so that's my stitching. And kind of the market recap. Although I did want to, I did have a fairly interesting conversation with um, Michelle from uh, uh, Bendy Stitchy. We were. She was standing in line behind me at dinner while well, we were waiting to be seated. And she was talking about how, as a designer, um, for her, market is just fun because all of her hard work is done already. And she said, and you, you shop owners are just getting started with your hard work. And I had to argue with her a little bit about that because as a shop owner, my, my market experience starts with the very first sneak peek that comes out and it's still going on I still have a lot to do because I've got all that fabric to take care of I have uh, orders to still get out I have to um, you know collect payment ship orders that sort of thing so my it basically started in the beginning of February and she didn't think that our job starts until we get to market. And I'm like, no, 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 because we've got to track down the sneak peeks because they're not all in the same place. You've got to check the Instagram hashtag, which there's like three. There's, there was a Nashville Needlework Market 2023. There's a Nashville Needlework Market. There's Nashville 2023 Nashville Needlework Market. Um, so I think there were three that you had to check this year. You have to check, sometimes the designer doesn't use the hashtag and they just put it on their own personal page or they put it on their design, the designer page. 
Sometimes you have to go to their blog. Sometimes you have to go to their website. Sometimes you have to go to Facebook, um, their personal page or their designer's page, because some have some do both. Um, sometimes you get, if you're lucky, you get an email. Um, but even a lot of those I didn't receive this year, even though I should have because I'm on the list. But you know email, it sometimes, it sometimes gets lost in space. Um, I found a lot of them, I check the spam every day because a lot of them do go into spam. Um, so, I mean, and that in and of itself is, is a job. Having to check those every day is time consuming. Um, and that, that lasts right up until the day you leave for market. And then you've got, you know, the work at market and just FYI, I am, and I am not complaining. I'm just explaining. Um, yes, market is a lot of work. It's a lot of work for the designers to get ready for market. It's a lot of work for shop owners to get ready for market. And then it's a lot of work for them to be at market. And then it's a lot of work after market. So my, my point to her was that, no, our job did not start at market. It started a month ahead of market. And it goes probably for a month after market. Um, but it's, you know, it's part of the job. It is what it is. Would it be nice if everybody put their sneak peeks in one place? Yes. And that was brought up in our retailers workshop or forum. Someone suggested, you know, couldn't there be a website where the designers could just dump everything and and the response from Yarn Tree was, do you wanna do you wanna be the administrator for that? No one wants that job. I I I I I don't think anyone would really have to have that job if, and correct me if I'm wrong, if everyone used the same hashtag and everyone put their stuff on Instagram under that hashtag, but not everybody does. Not everybody's on Instagram, I don't think. But it would sure make life easier if there was just one place that the shop owner could go to find the sneak peeks, which I use that term loosely too. I don't personally like the little snippets. They do me no good. So this year I decided I am not doing things twice. I'm going to wait until I get an email or can find a full picture of the piece before I put it on the website because I don't have time to do things twice. Um, and that seemed to work better for me. Uh, I don't know if it worked better for my customers or not, but I had a lot of a lot of the ones that come and stitch in my shop talk about they have in the past ordered um, based on the snippet, like the one little corner, you know, and then when they they actually got the whole thing, they were disappointed. So they weren't going to do that this year, they said. Uh, I don't know if they did or did not because they do go look at other places other than just my website. But, um, so yes, it would make, it would make a shop owner's job a, a lot easier if it was all posted under the same hashtag, you know, like, like Yarn Tree and their, their informational packet to the designer says, this is the hashtag to use. Do not use any other hashtag. Now granted, you can only make the suggestion. You can't, you can't, you can lead the horse to water. You cannot make him drink. So they could put that out there and people could still do their own thing. That's just the nature of people. But it sure would be nice if everyone could play, play on a level playing field and uh, put everything in the same spot. It would make, it would make the job leading up to market a lot easier. There's really no way to make the market experience any less work than it is it's work but it's also a lot of fun and there's nothing you can do you know on the back side of things you, you still have to I had a lot of it already in the computer because of the previews but there was stuff there that what that was not what I didn't I didn't have stuff for and that includes fabric and finishing things and 
you know, scissors that you didn't know were going to be there. Yeah, so you're always going to come home and have to put it into your into your system if you use a computerized system. I'm always kind of interested or puzzled. I'm always kind of puzzled how people get back from market on Monday and by Tuesday everything is out and and people can come in. I I don't know how they do it. It took it took me, Connie, Doreen, Lori and Rosie the whole dang week. We got everything in there on Thursday. Friday was uh, the day to pull pull orders and uh, that sort of thing. So I don't know how people do it so quickly. I guess I'm just super slow. But anyway, um, I thought it was an interesting perspective from from Michelle, and I was wondering if the rest of the designers feel the same way, that the shop owner's job doesn't start until market. Because if that's what you're thinking, that's not true. <laughs> not true at all. Um, but I do want to thank the designers for all their hard work and all their wonderful designs. We do appreciate it. And um, I, wish, I wish we could have more time to... That was another thing that was brought up. You know, they, they made everyone be open on Friday night, which, yes, gives us more, more shopping time. But, and the only way to make this any better would be if we stayed until Monday and didn't leave until Monday, which we might do. I have in the past said I had to be home by Tuesday, um, because if I'm not there, the shop is closed. But based on the amount of business we did between Tuesday and Saturday, I could be closed and it wouldn't be a big issue. So we might possibly for next year consider staying all day on Sunday so that we can, um, I could go and talk to like that some of the designers that were still real busy before I left, um, that I didn't get to talk to. So we'll have to think about that. Anyway, that's that was my final thought. I think on on uh, Michelle, it was good to to chat with you a little bit about that. And um, no, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So now, um, for those of you who aren't inter interested in the uh, vintage and antique stuff that I brought home, um, thanks for watching, and have a great week. And I will see you next time. For the rest of you, sit back, grab a cup of coffee or hot chocolate or iced tea, depending on what your weather is like. And we'll just go through this and chat a little bit about it. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to go in any particular order. Um, I bought stuff from Artichoke Annie's, and I bought stuff from... It was a little place off the interstate called The Running Rabbit, I think it was the name of it. And I didn't buy anything in Paducah. I could have. I had a couple things in my hand, and then I decided I didn't want I, I, I didn't want them, so I put them back where they belonged, exactly where I got them, because I do that. I don't, I don't know about I know a lot of people just plop things wherever they happen to be, but I always like to return them to where I got them from, because it I don't like to make extra work for people. Okay, so this is the first little thing. It's an unassuming little little leather snap box but it's a it's a sewing kit and it does say it's genuine leather and inside the sewing kit were these bobbins um, but the one the reason I bought it you know I have I have quite a few of the wooden bobbins but I thought this little wooden bobbin was so cute so I went ahead and got it just because of this bobbin. It reads, what does it read on there? 
Kloss, Kloster, something floss, darning floss. I guess this is for darning. 10 yards, two ply. Anyway, I thought, I thought it was cute. So I went ahead and got that. Rosie actually spotted it. She didn't want it though. It looks like there probably was a pair of scissors that went in, in here at some point. And there is some rusty crusty needles that probably need to be thrown away. So I don't get tetanus. <laughs> I got some sew and stitch um, needle assortment books. Two different versions. They both say sew and stitch, but two different versions. And they still have quite a few needles in them. This one doesn't have any needles in it. It's empty. But they're really good. You can take these and display them with these. Next purchase that I'm going to show you um, are these metal flower frogs with the prongs, the sharp pokey pokey prongs. Those are real good for display purposes, not, not to put your... Um, going to use a different one. I bought four of them because the price was really good. But I'm going to use a different one. I got I got this round one. This I think was originally 39 cents. But it's good to to just kind of display your little vintage paper stuff in. So I like to do that. So that's that was this was one. This is two. They weigh it. They, they'd be good a good weapon because they're heavy, but they're also very very sharp and pokey. So you could really do some damage with that. This one's kind of got a coppery or browns look to it, and then this one is silver. Good for displaying things. And I have, it's a, the Singer Drawing Book for Young Artists, Singer Sewing Machines, and it has, it has like these little, a stitch in time saves nine. Um, with chickens and I'm not sure there's like this thin paper in between I'm not sure if you were supposed to like trace over it like you're drawing I don't I don't know if that was the purpose but I I don't know do you like cherries um, some rabbits there's little butterflies and then in the back, they have the picture of the little tiny old Singer sewing machine. And that's the front. And then on the back side is that picture. So there's lots of different ways a person could uh, display this. You could display it showing this. You could display it showing this one. You could just leave it open to one of the pictures. I don't I don't know if it it came it's stamped Pueblo, Colorado. And it says printed in the USA, but it doesn't necessarily say when it was printed. But I thought that was really cute. Um I got a pretty Pink, this was five dollars. Uh, pink Kona fabric. It's that very pale kind of peachy pink. And it was only five, so I'm like, I'll do that. I got some books. Uh, this is Tales of Olden Days, book five. 
um, what is stamp board of education from somewhere. I, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell you when, but this was 1930. Stories in Music Appreciation, Book 5. Um, so I guess it talks about music. And there's some pictures in it, nothing earth-shattering or anything. There's... But for display purposes, I, I liked the color. It'll look good for a display, which I'm always thinking about display. This one is Carpenter's Geographical Reader, Europe. Um, and I believe this is, well, um, 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 1914. And it says, this book aims to give the children a plain and simple description of the countries of Europe as they are today. Well, they're not this way today, but the book weighs a frickin' ton. Like, it's not any bigger than this other one, but it weighs almost twice as much, and I don't know why, why it does. But it's got some interesting pictures in it. You know, this is the Netherlands. So it's got some interesting pictures, but again, I got it mostly because I like the color of the outside. Um, there, are, there is no lack of amusements in the German capital. There are more than a score of theaters, a large opera house partially supported by the government, and so many concert halls that we can hear good music in almost every block. I don't know if it's still that way, but that's how it was back then when the book was written. Written. And then this is the Heath Readers, third reader. Um, it's got a real pretty cover on it. And there's the spine. I always find these kind of, um, this belonged to Virgie Crick in Alma, Missouri. Um, I always find them kind of amusing to read because um, it, it's it's got some interesting oh look she's written her friends names on the there's a picture in here and little Virgie has written which one is her she's written Virgie Crick on there um, I don't know what that one said this one looks like it's Mary um, but some of the content is not necessarily what I would want to read. You know, one of them, I just had opened it up when I was looking at the book, and it was talking about some little kid kicking the dog just because he wanted to. And I'm like, hmm, uh-uh, uh-uh, nope. But it's got different stories in it and different different interesting pictures. But uh, she wrote quite a bit in her in her little book. But again, I got it because I like the cover, and, and they were they were like three dollars a piece. So they usually they want ten or twelve for books like that at the here in town. So I was happy with that. All right, this is a broken lid from a box. Uh, and I'm gonna have Dan kind of glue it so it will stand up and I can use it for, again, for a display. But it's uh, embroidery cotton, guar guaranteed fast colors. Looks like Connor Gar Garanti. I don't know. I don't know, but it's it's it was a wooden wooden box, and obviously it broke, and someone saved the top. I didn't pay much for it, but I thought it'd be cute for display, and then you could lay some 
threads or something down there. A little piece of lace with some threads would be good as the background of a display. Um, I bought this because I had never seen one this shape before. It's a it's a grater from a Gadget Master product. There's a fine shredder, a grater, and a coarse shredder. But I hadn't seen this this shape before. And again, I'll use it as in a display somewhere. I just thought it was an interesting shape and it wasn't very much money. Okay, this one you're going to have to tell me what it is because it, it looks like it should be kind of a bunt pan, but it's I don't think it's a bunt pan. It's a, just an old, grungy, dirty metal. See, it's got the thing in the middle. I don't know. What do you think it was used for? It's got, and I don't know if they did it or if it came that way, but it's got this hole up here and this partial chain. So I don't know what it was used for, but I thought it was interesting and it was cheap, so I bought it. See a theme here? It was cheap. <laughs> okay, this one is interesting. I haven't had a chance to really look and see if it says anything anywhere or not. It's a hoop. It's an embroidery hoop, and it's old, but it's kind of cool. Do, do you know anything about have you seen one like this before? Can you tell me anything about it? I haven't haven't had a chance to go looking. It's got the the two you, so you can see where it was put together right there. It's got the you know, the fabric wrapped around it. But that design goes all the way around. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about that. Um, this was probably my find of the day. I got this at Artichoke Annie's, and whoever had it probably didn't realize what they had, but because it was only three dollars for both. These are the Duchess hoops. They both say Duchess on them. Let me find it, Duchess, right there. And so does this one. Now Connie said, uh, where did it go? Connie said she'd never seen one this small. But yeah, I'm like, oh, well for $3, I'll buy them. I picked up a couple of tomatoes. I don't think they're particularly old but I picked them up anyway to put in my jar of tomatoes. Um, and then, okay, I think I told or had mentioned, had I mentioned that I'd taken a couple of empty, well, three empty frames and um, hung them on the wall over by where the stitching tables are and I had put some of those really long scissors in one of them and another pair in one of the other frames. In the third frame, I had one pair in it, but I needed to find a couple other vintage -y looking scissors. Um, so I hit the jackpot. <laughs> yeah. Bought quite a few vintage -y pairs of scissors because I wasn't sure what sizes would work best. Um, so I just bought some that I thought were kind of interesting looking or that felt good. Uh, this says 3U-6, and if I had a pair of glasses, here's a pair of readers right here. Excuse me. Let's see if it says anything. Compton. Oh, that's what it says, Compton. Patton, USA. So it's just a little silver pair of scissors, nothing special, but they were cheap. <laughs> this is like a buttonhole scissor. I don't know anything about how they work, but it's kind of interesting because it's got that cutout in the blade. So I'm not quite sure how it works, 
but I picked that pair up. This is like a brand new pair of Wiss, W-I-S-S, -S, uh, scissors. And they, I don't think they've ever been used, or very rarely used. Um, they feel really good. It says Wiss inlaid on the blades, and ISCO, there's a, a sticker, ISCO. So I picked that up. They're Steel Forge number 36. This is the most interesting pair that I picked up. It says Ever Sharp Forged Steel USA. Um, it's kind of really rusty and crusty, but look at the etching design on the handles. I thought that was pretty cool. So now I can finish the putting th stuff in that frame. This is kind of a silly little purchase. Again, it was it was not expensive, uh, and it was in a basket full of. I can take these off now. It was in a basket full of just random miscellaneous stuff, uh, and they had quite a few of these clock pendulums. Um, I just thought it was very pretty design up here and down here. So I thought, well, you know, I could use that in some sort of a display in a basket or something sticking out maybe maybe this way sticking up in a basket. And again, it was <laughs> you're going to get tired of hearing this. It was cheap. So I was I did not have a lot of uh extra cash, so um I had to really kind of mind my spending while I was away. Um, and then this basket, A, the basket's cool. So I got the basket and all the contents for $4. Inside this basket, there's a gold coin, cone, which I really love this color. And again, it's for display purposes. Um, there's a metal oval hoop. I don't think it's anything particularly special. And this, this ugly piece of fabric needs to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get that off of there. Oh, it's been hot glued. Obviously, someone was using it for some sort of decoration. Um, there's a yellow cone, not to be confused with the gold cone. There is, what does this say? It's a spool of some kind. A made in the USA, intrinsic. It was black at one point, the thread. It's cotton thread, four cord, from the American Thread Company. That's not why I bought the basket. I bought the basket for um, the cones. I like the cones. Here's another very dirty yellow cone, slightly smaller than the others, and it's got plastic rather than cardboard in the middle. So one would one would think this and this is not as old as the others, but I could be wrong. It had a dirty piece of fabric in it that I'll be throwing away. And a little tiny metal, it must be a bobbin. For a sewing machine, I would guess. I won't be using it for that. And, and then, you know, the basket. So for $4, I thought, why not? I found another pair of scissors that I bought, too. This was a little tiny pair of embroidery scissors that was in the same case with all these others that I bought. 
I don't know if it says anything on it or anything that I can make out. Hmm, can't make it out. They're, they're a little wobbly. I don't know if that screw could be tightened maybe if one had a small enough bet it could be so it wouldn't be wobbly. I'll use my fingernail. It will promptly break off the fingernail, not the scissors. And I don't think it's doing anything. Um, so anyway, yeah, another little tiny embroidery pair of scissors. So that, that was my, my treasures from our, our trip. Um, there were several other antique shops in Paducah, but um, we only stopped at two of them. Probably the other ones would have been better. It's always, the grass is always greener on the other side, but oh well. This was fine. We, we had a good time. Um, it, it's always just fun to look and see what, every antique store has its own flavor, so it was just kind of fun to, to go into some ones we haven't been in before. Um, and on that note, I think, I think I don't have a whole lot else to talk about. I already, oh, yes I do. <laughs> oh my God, how could I forget? So, whilst I was gone, Dan got it into his head that he was going to start a new project here in the house. Now, keep in mind, we had talked about it just kind of briefly. Oh, yeah, when when we do the kitchen, because right, right after the pandemic started, we had someone come in and we had designed doing the, and removing a wall and really redoing the kitchen and then we couldn't get anyone to um to come give us a quote on it and so we just did the bathroom instead of the bathroom and the kitchen which was our original intention so you know he's gotten kind of tired of me complaining about my lack of counters in here and we were just kind of talking a little bit okay how could we how could how could we make it better on our own without hiring someone? So we didn't want to. We didn't want to move any any plumbing. We didn't have to move any. You know, what what is that special electrical for the stove? Two twenty. We didn't want to have to mess with that. Um, we didn't really want to take out whole walls or anything. Um, so we, we had, what we had discussed was because I have, I have very little counter space and very little cupboards and we have a dining room that is very rarely used, maybe twice a year, if that. So we had discussed turning the, the dining room into more of like a butler's pantry. And so we had discussed, um, you know, what I had in my head for, we would take the, the current pantry and move it into the, the dining room. I'm looking over that way because that's where it is. Um, and then we could extend the counter, giving me a little, one longer run of counter, because I have a little counter next to the stove and then I've got an angled counter on the other side of the stove and then I have the counter over here that's the longest counter that I have but it's you know it's got the paper towels and it's got the canisters and it's so there's the the dishwasher is right underneath that counter and it's one of those that has the digital front on it and you know your belly's touches it and it turns the dishwasher on. So I try and avoid using that counter whenever I can. So taking the pantry out 
and moving it into the dining room just kind of on the other side of the wall. We could put in another set of uppers and lowers and have an ex a longer countertop. But then you lose the pantry in the kitchen. So I'm like, well, we can put it on the other side of that wall and then we can build some others to go with it because I have no place to put the vacuum cleaner, the broom, the um, Swiffer, the Swiffer wet, uh, no place in the house to do that. There's not like a broom closet. Um, it's either piled up between the washer and the dryer in the laundry room, which again, I have the world's smallest laundry room, or it's in the coat closet and then you can't get coats in and out without everything falling out. Um, so, you know, I would want the pantry and then I would want a kind of a narrow closet next to it that would have, I could put that stuff in and, and then some, uh, you know, because I'm short, I have short arms, I can't reach a lot of the upper cabinets here. So they're, they're just basically storage for things that we very rarely use but you got to have like the crock pot and stuff. Um, so, you know, on the other opposite wall that we'd put a couple more cupboards and then put a, like an island in the middle that again would have more storage under it, be another work surface. And then we could put an overhang on the one side for seating. So we wouldn't totally lose the use of it as a dining room. It just wouldn't be a formal dining room anymore. And it would be, you know, do I keep it as a dining room for the two times a year that we need it? Or do I change it to something that's going to make life easier for me? Plus, we've got the whole contraption because if the dogs get out there, they think it's open season on, oh, here, we can, we can do our bathroom duties out here. For some, I don't ask me why. It's a wood floor. I don't know why, why they think it's acceptable to go to the bathroom out there. But if they get out there, Remy will go. I don't know it's so much rags, but Remy will go out there, uh, given half a chance. So right currently, right now, to get to that room, you have to go through the gate here and out past the front door, through the library, and around into that room. You probably aren't interested in this, but you're going to hear it anyway. <laughs> because we have a plat, you know, one of those six foot long plastic tables that people put up when they have extra company. That is across the doorway. And then there's two chairs backed up against it because rags can jump over the door. And then all she does is stand at the front door and bark at people. So, um, and I hate it with a passion. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. So what I'd like like to do is turn that into kind of a walk-in butler's pantry with an island and lots and lots of storage for all the stuff that I currently don't have storage for. And um, have Dan build it like a, maybe a sliding barn door or something that could go across that doorway. And it's, it, it's a narrow door. So I would also like it to be expanded a little bit more. So it would feel more like it's part of the kitchen. If the door is open, does that make sense? So while I, we had, we had kind of talked about this. Yeah. Well, when we get to it, you know, that's kind of how I have it in my head, Dan. Well, while I was gone, Dan decided to start that project without telling me, thinking he would have it all done before I got back. <laughs> oh, that man. That man, you, there's no way you're going to have all that done before I got back. I was only gone for five days. So he got, he got the pantry removed. 
so all of the stuff in the pantry is now either on the dining room table or on the floor of the library. We have no no cupboards ordered or anything. Um, that, yeah. I don't know what he was thinking. I love the man dearly, but sometimes, sometimes it's bad. So now we're, we're going to have to do that, the kitchen. And then he started talking about originally, because we used to have one of those orangey oak kitchen cabinet things. And about well, seven or eight years ago, we used the cabinet transformations from Rust-Oleum and we painted them. It's a little bit lighter than than ooh, that. Nope, back that way, that color. It's a little bit lighter, but it's got the aged look to it. Maybe you can see, yeah, up there, up there, you know. So it's kind of painted cream and then you put the distressing over the top of it. But we can't remember what color we used for that. And this is darker than what I want. Um, and then he started talking about, well, yeah, he probably, it being seven years old and all, um, it's starting to chip in, in, in a couple of places and how it needs to be, probably he just needs to paint all the cabinets again and, and, uh, or, or maybe it'd be less work if we just got all new cabinets. <laughs> like, oh my God, seriously. So now we've gone from just replacing a couple to, oh, well, maybe we'll just rip them all out and get all new. So I have no idea what we're doing with this this kitchen. It could be we repaint it. And, and I told him, I said, well, since you brought it up, because I wasn't going to bring it up. I was not bringing that up. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. But since you brought up the idea of repainting, maybe I want a different color. Maybe I want a pale green. Or maybe I want a dark green. I, I don't know, because I hadn't really, it was not on my radar for doing anytime soon. So, but now it's gotta be, because I can't, I'm not gonna live with it this way. Mm -mm. No, I'm not. So yeah, that is what, my husband did whilst I was gone. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to stick a fork in it and call it done. I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I'm sorry if you didn't. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I know the one gal that, that came up and talked to me at market said she doesn't comment. So surprise me and comment my my last video i only got 24 comments it's very sad so comment please and uh, give me your opinion on some of the things i asked your opinion on let me know if you know what what brand that one hoop is the one with all the you know this one or if you've ever seen one like it before um, and I'm going to, my goal for this week is to start working on the fabric. But like I said, I bought a ton of fabric. And if I should happen to receive my Fortnite, there's even more. Um, and it is going to take me a while because again, I don't have, I don't have any assistance with that. Um, and I can't call Melanie in because, um, I gotta wait until I see if I come down with COVID. Um, so I'm gonna start to measure. I gotta sort through it and figure out what's gonna be sold by the square inch and what's gonna be pre-cuts. And then I have to start measuring everything and cutting. So it's gonna take a while, but that my goal is to start on that. That's why I went in today to get my shipping stuff done and to, um, clean up the mess that was left from Saturday and um, so that I could hopefully have time to get to it and start. 
but we'll see. We'll see how busy I am. And um, with that, I'm going to let you go. And hopefully, y'all enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you next time. Take care until then. Bye-bye.